are the most experienced dependent species that has ever existed on the planet. Our brain depends on its experiences to build itself. Genes lay a blueprint, but they actually only contain a microscopic amount of information compared with the trillions of connections and bits of information that actually go into building and shaping the human brain. Let me give you an example. Close your left eye and take your left index finger and hold it right in front of your nose. Keep your left eye closed and take your right index finger and hold it directly behind your left so you can only see your left finger. Now alternate having only one eye open at a time, only your right, only your left, and you should see that sometimes you see both fingers and sometimes you only see one finger. What's happening is that each eye is taking in a completely different perspective of the world, but our brain fuses those images together to help us make sense of our reality, to help us see in 3D, have depth perception, and know that an object is hidden behind another. This is called stereoscopic vision. The thing is, as babies, we are not born with stereoscopic vision. It is experience-dependent. You might be thinking, isn't that inconvenient? Wouldn't it be easier if we were just born with the ability to see in 3D and have depth perception? Possibly, but the fact that our brain waits to see what's in store for us first before it figures all that out is a major reason why we are as adaptive and flexible as we are. The fact that our brain is so experience-dependent means that our brain will customize us for our very specific circumstances. But there's also a less helpful side to having such an experience-dependent brain, and this has to do with the frontal areas of the brain, especially something called the prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is related to executive functioning, Many of you have likely heard of executive functioning. These are things like controlling our impulses, weighing of pros and cons, and thinking of future consequences. These prefrontal areas also help us with self-regulating, which is our ability to manage our stress and how our emotions affect us. Without these prefrontal features, we become dysregulated. We become volatile in the storm of sensations and stimuli that bombard our senses at every moment. Examples of dysregulation include things like throwing a tantrum, overreacting to the smallest thing, or collapsing in the face of a challenge. The thing is, as babies, we are not born with self-regulating or executive functioning skills. We are only born with the potential to develop them, and we need our experiences to help us do that. In fact, some scientists would say that when we are born, we are subcortical, meaning we don't have high-speed access to those features of the cortex, especially the prefrontal cortex. Instead, our brain basically has to triage what circuitry it should focus on first. Because sure, it would be great to think of future consequences, but if we can't even stand upright or move our hand to our mouth, those skills need to be taken care of first. So our brain devotes its resources in waves over time, and it focuses first on the areas towards the back of the brain, areas related to movement and coordination, for example. The frontal areas, especially that prefrontal cortex, are the last to fully come online. This means that when we are little, we don't have access to brain features that help us self-regulate. To deal with this, our brain does something very clever. It basically outsources its executive functioning and self-regulating to our caregivers. Our caregivers act as a stand-in for our prefrontal cortex. This means that we need the people around us to be prefrontal cortex models. I call them PFC models. We need them to be able to manage their stress and regulate their emotions and control their impulses in order for us to build those features in our brain. This is the most important when we are really little, but we need our experiences to build these brain features for many, many years. In fact, brain mapping shows us that the prefrontal cortex isn't fully developed until our mid-20s. That means we need PFC models around us for a huge portion of our life in order for us to develop our self-regulating abilities. It also means 
that your past is likely playing a role in how you react to things now. If you didn't have consistent PFC models in your life, people who knew how to manage their stress, control their impulses, and regulate their emotions, you might have some challenges in doing that for yourself now. So does that mean we're pretty much all doomed? <laughs> Well, the beautiful part of having an experience-dependent brain is that the experiences we give it now can still have an impact. We can give our brain new experiences that activate new circuits, especially in those prefrontal areas. And the more we do, the stronger those areas become. Our brain can change. We can do this in a bottom-up way and a top-down way. A bottom-up way is to have new experiences that challenge us, Things like speaking in public, having a conversation with someone we don't agree with, experiencing new cultures, learning things we've never learned before. If we feel nervous about any of those things, that's actually great news for your brain, because feeling nervous about a challenge and then taking action requires you to regulate your own emotional distress. We can also activate new circuits in those prefrontal areas in a top-down way, by having a new awareness about ourselves. When we notice our own reactions and pay attention to sensations in our body when we're getting upset, we're activating our PFC. When we slow down instead of reacting immediately to something someone has said, or we pause before we type that angry text or tweet, we're working out our executive functioning skills. And when we control an urge to go on our screens or social media when we're bored or upset, and instead, we go for a walk, or take some long exhalations, or connect face-to-face -face with someone. We're strengthening the self-regulation networks in our brain. Having an experience-dependent brain means although our past plays a role in how we react to things now, it also means we can activate new circuits. We don't have to keep repeating our past over and over again. But we need to make this a priority, because as a species, we are at a crossroads. There are so many young people right now who are surrounded by parents, caregivers, teachers, leaders, who themselves are dysregulated and who did not have their own PFC models. This means that a massive portion of the planet is completely dysregulated. And when we don't know how to self-regulate because no one is around to show us, we turn to our devices or substances to do this or we repeat unhealthy behaviors over and over again because we're stuck feeling overwhelmed by the world, our relationships, and our own emotions. We also dysregulate the people around us, and especially the next generation, because their brains depend on our prefrontal abilities to help them self-regulate. It's clear that our brain depends on our experiences, so what can we do with this? Well, the first, is just simply to acknowledge that because you have an experience-dependent brain, your past plays a role in how you react to things now. It also means that everyone else's experiences are playing a role in how they react to you. We are human, so we can't get around this, so we might as well acknowledge it. The second is to understand and feel hopeful about the fact that because you, along with all other humans, have an experience-dependent brain, you can choose new experiences that not only give your brain new circuits to work with, but that can inspire others to build their own new circuitry as well. And lastly, because you have an experience-dependent brain, your very personalized, customized, unique experiences have built incredible neural networks in you that have never existed before and will never exist in anyone else ever again. No brain will ever be like yours. It's up to you to share your extraordinary neural circuitry with others. You can choose which brain model you will be, one that is stuck because of its past experiences, or one that is a model to help others have new experiences to light up their brilliant, beautiful, and powerful brains. Thank you. <laughs>